And let's also talk about the elephant in the room. I had a stroke. He's never let me forget that. And I might miss some words during this debate, mush two words together, but it knocked me down, but I'm going to keep coming back up. And this campaign is all about, to me, is about fighting for everyone in Pennsylvania that ever got knocked down that needs to get back up and fighting for all forgotten communities all across Pennsylvania that also got knocked down that needs to keep get back up. Thank you very much. That was Democratic Pennsylvania gubernatorial candidate John Fetterman during the Keystone State's first and only debate addressing the so-called elephant in the room. Throughout the night, Fetterman struggled with his speech due to suffering a stroke several months ago. Fetterman faced off against Republican challenger Dr. Mehmet Oz, who made the case that he was the change candidate. Let's listen to that. I have loved traveling to the four corners of the beautiful Commonwealth, and I've heard your problems. I'm a surgeon, doctor. I listen to what you say, and I'm trying to help address them today. I've talked to seniors worried their Social Security checks wouldn't go far enough with the raging inflation. I've talked to couples when I make their first down payment on a new house and they can't afford it anymore because of interest rates. I've talked to families. You want to cut Social Security. M Mr. Fetterman, it's his turn for his closing. I've talked to, f to families worried about fentanyl showing up in their mailbox and literally taking the lives of their children who they find blue in bed. I I've talked to families who won't let their kids go outside because of the crime wave that's been facilitated by left radical policies like the ones John Fetterman has been advocating for. But here's the deal. Right? None of this has to happen. This is all very addressable. I'm a surgeon. I'm not a politician. We take big problems, we focus on them, and we fix them. We do it by uniting, by coming together, not dividing. And by doing that, we can get ahead. But I've got one question to challenge you with, just one question. If you take what I'm saying to heart, ask yourself this and others in your family. Are you unhappy with where America's headed? I am. And if you are as well, then I'm the candidate for change. And we also have part of Fetterman's closing statement. Watch this. I never got knocked down. I had to get back up again. You know, I'm also fighting for any forgotten community all across Pennsylvania. They ever got knocked down. That had to be made to get back up. You know, I've made my entire career dedicating to those kinds of pursuits. I started as a GED instructor back in, in Braddock over 20 years ago because I believe it's about serving Pennsylvania, not about using Pennsylvania for uh, their own end interests as well. Uh, to me, careers are revealed uh, by your, your real underlying values. And my values have always been about fighting for forgotten communities all across Pennsylvania. All right, thank you, Mr. So it was a disaster for Fetterman, in my view, and I, that's the view of, I think, a lot of commentators who watched it. Um, that was him at his most coherent. He uh, struggled so many times to answer questions, uh, repeated himself. I, if, if I were his staff, his handlers, I would not have let him do this debate. Um, I, 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 if there are voters who, whose minds are capable of being changed or up for grabs, and who are tr who truly could vote for an R or D? You know, we talk about how there aren't actually that many of those people. Most people are, you know, fairly operating off fairly partisan assumptions at this point. I, I can't imagine watching this debate and, and thinking that that man is capable of um, of of being in the Senate. Uh, that's very sad to say. I, oh, I that's don't... so interesting because I was agreeing with you up until the claim that he's not capable of being in the Senate. Not because, because I, so I agree that it was a very difficult to watch debate. Obviously, you know, I think folks have a lot of compassion for what it means to have to recover from a stroke publicly. It's a terrible situation mm -hmm. for anybody to be in and was completely unpredictable. Uh, however, it was, it was a poor showing and I think it probably made a lot of people very uncomfortable. However, I also do think that a lot of voters are simply looking for the person who is going to co-sign a Democratic Party agenda versus a Republican agenda. And as many people who have been, you know, working for many years on the Hill will attest to, it doesn't take a lot to be there to pull and push that button or, or pull I mean, that lever. I unfortunately, maybe that's true. For an agenda. Yeah, maybe that's true. Uh, it, if there are people voting based on presentation or clarity of communication or anything like that, Look, I, I don't know. Maybe it's just a communications problem, and 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 maybe he's recovering, and he'll be a lot better in a couple weeks, in months. But 
I would have great. I, I wouldn't blame anyone for having grave doubts about his fitness um, after watching that. It was it was that bad. It was so bad. It, it was. I mean, it was embarrassing. It was hard to watch. It was painful to watch because I, I I feel bad for him that he's in this position. You know, you wonder what other choices could be made. Obviously, this yeah, happened. Well, I, we were looking at the act, actual day. This happened. The stroke happened a few days right before, the, before primary. the primary, which he won. Yeah, so I, I think that there's a reason that people, that he won the primary and that people are excited about him in the first place. They voted for him in the primary, yeah. knowing that he had had a stroke, because he's very known in Pennsylvania. Well, he's but known I as a, a, local, a local guy who is really in touch with the people, who doesn't put on airs and presents in a way that is relatable to folks. I mean, we've been seeing a lot of what, what Pennsylvania and Philadelphia has to offer as their sports teams have been doing very well recently. And you can see exactly why he would be approachable. We interviewed him on the sort of show. I think, it, well, I think it was before you joined us. It was me and Ryan Grimm, I think. And yeah, I, I saw absolutely why he was a successful candidate. So I thought there was, so absolutely so thought so there was the, something alluring about him. That was before the stroke. Right, but so, different... so the question is, knowing people voted for him knowing that he had a stroke because they were invested in who he was before. But I don't and think I they think, knew the wait extent a minute, of... For the, for the people who still feel that way. The question is, do you have enough confidence in the trajectory of recovery? Do you have people in your life who have had strokes, et cetera? And do you care enough about the issues, like some things we're about to discuss in terms of uh, the abortion rights, mm -hmm. which Dr. Oz would not squarely ask, answer whether or not he would uphold them and said basically that a woman's role, <laughs> uh, a, woman should, a woman's right to choose should be made and established in consultation with her local politician. Yeah, let's actually, and, let's play that clip. Yeah. yeah. I want women, doctors, local uh, political leaders, letting the democracy that's always allowed our nation to thrive to put the best ideas forward so states can decide for themselves. Do you believe that the choice for abortion belongs between you and your doctor? That's what I fight for. Roe v. Wade, for me, is, should be the law. He celebrated when Roe v. Wade went down, and my campaign would fight for Roe v. Wade, and if given the opportunity to codify it into law. So Dr. Oz was asked really specifically whether or not he would support uh, Mitch McConnell's federal ban on abortion. And he said, well, I don't agree with any uh, federal interference with your abortion rights. And he was asked again to clarify whether or not he would Lindsay support Grams, an abortion. Right? Lindsey Graham, sorry, who did I say? McConnell. Sorry, Lindsey Graham's uh, ban. And he was asked again, and that's what provoked the statement of, of well, you know, he, it, he clearly left the door open to, federal, to statewide interference with their right to choose, which is the concern here, obviously. Yeah. I, look, I, I'm not saying that was a great answer or anything. I, I think it's just very beside the point because he just, he couldn't do a Fetterman. It, it was rough. It was so what, rough. So I'm, we should talk a little that, bit about but. what Federer affirmatively said. For example, again, on the issues, some other people might be concerned with the fact that there is this uh, uh, assessment from Dr. From, from Fetterman that Oz is planning to cut Social Security, and Dr. Oz denied it vociferously and said that Dr. Uh, that Fetterman has no evidence of that. And Fetterman didn't have evidence of it in the debate. He was unable to recall why it was that he believed Oz had that plan. You know, and uh, some fact checks and follow up. You know, Oz has said back in April that he approved of Republican uh, Senatorial Chairman Chair Rick Scott's plan to sunset federal legislation after five years. And in that interview, Oz praised Scott, saying his vision for what the party can do going forward, um, uh, saying he has a game plan and endorsing the policy to sunset programs like Social Security. And as I'll talk about at length in my radar, that is, broadly speaking, the Republican Party's stated approach to addressing the inflation crisis. Uh, so I think that's real. And again, for voters who care about someone who's going to be a consistent vote on upholding those kind of social safety net programs that so many folks rely on, they might not care about some of the... the I mean, a lot of Pennsylvania issues. voters care about fracking. He, Fetterman was asked about it uh, because he said he supported fracking, but there's video footage of him uh, from uh, several years ago saying, exp uh, expressing the other view, and he was asked why he had changed his mind, and, and he just he repeated, to, I yeah. support fracking yeah. a couple times. And yeah, there's something weirdly kind of honest. <laughs> Politicians flip-flop their uh, uh, yeah. decisions all the time, and it was kind of nice not to hear the ridiculous justification for it. Okay, you support fracking now. I don't support fracking, to be clear. And I think a lot of leftists were disappointed by a lot of the 
um, concessions that he was making to a more conservative mm -hmm. base. But look, all we can do is sit and watch. In response to his debate performance, the Fetterman campaign claimed they were working off of delayed closed captioning. Last night's debate was hosted by a News Nation. News Nation uh, is the parent company, a News Nation's parent company, rather, is Nextar Media, which also owns The Hill. Uh, and they released a statement in response to Fetterman's claims disputing them, saying both candidates were offered the opportunity for two full rehearsals with the same equipment used in tonight's debate. Mr. Fetterman chose to do only one. In fact, Nextar's production team went to extraordinary lengths to ensure the effectiveness of the closed captioning process and to accommodate several last minute requests of the Fetterman campaign. The closed captioning process function as expected during rehearsal and again during tonight's debate. We regret that Mr. Fetterman and his campaign feel otherwise. So there you have it. And we will back, be back with more Rising right after this.